Today we're going to look at PowerCore Combiner's Huffer. I only recently got this toy, but it came out in 2010. That puts it squarely in the era of the early live action movies. I don't recall seeing him in any of the movies, but I don't think this line was specifically tied to those movies either. Huffer turns into a yellow, black, and orange transport truck. This alt mode is a more realistic representation of a truck when compared to his G1 toy. It's certainly a powerful looking upgrade. He's one of the larger sized official Huffers that I've seen, which is not saying much because all Huffer toys are pretty small. Here he is next to Timeline's Huffer, which is a Scout class transformer. These guys are bigger than a Legend size, but smaller than a Deluxe. Here he is next to Beast Hunter's Huffer. As you can see, he's yellow, but not a bright yellow. More of a dirty yellow. He's definitely a more sensible design than that Tangerine Road Warrior reject. Here he is next to Combiner Wars Huffer. That orange truck is just a redeco of a legend size Optimus Prime. Which gets me thinking. Maybe Huffer wasn't the original intent of the Power Core Combiner mold. Even though he came out first, his mold was later used for Crankcase and Assault Master. With those darker color schemes, I get serious Nemesis Prime or maybe even Motormaster vibes, but more on that later. Right now, let's take a look at his Minicon companion, Caliburst. He attaches to the truck mode as an anti-aircraft gun or perhaps an artillery cannon. He's made up of a lot of translucent blue plastic, because reasons? It's probably to represent energy or something. That's the fictional gimmick, right? Smaller bots join onto bigger bots and give them a power boost. His gun mode has a limited range of movement on a very tight peg. Often when I remove him, Huffer's arms will also come unpegged from the bed of the truck. The blue things on the back of the truck are combiner pegs. They are obnoxiously light blue for no good reason and look very out of place. They would probably have blended in better with the design if they were black. The instructions show them up in truck mode, but you could also leave them down. Which position do you think is better? In robot mode, they act as heel spurs, so let's leave them up for transformation. It's a simple one, but interesting. Untab the forearms from the bed, split the arms and swing them to the front of the truck, fold them down, and rotate the forearms. Flip out the head, and separate the legs. Everything tabs in well, and the joints are good and tight. He is very solidly built, and there's no hollowness at all. Oh, I just noticed his hips are oriented the wrong way. The gray mushroom pegs should have been on the inside of the legs. The incorrect orientation doesn't seem to affect either mode, but since stop motion is tedious, I'm not going to bother reshooting that transformation. Let me just fix it quickly. There you go. Another way to tell if they're oriented properly is by looking at the raised horizontal mold details of the hips. They should be on the outside edge of the hips. This bot mode is muscular and has a beefy build. I would have never, ever have guessed that this was Huffer. He's more like Huffer's older, bigger brother, who's on steroids. He looks stronger, more confident, and battle-hardened. Having the toys side by side, I can sort of make out a bit of a family resemblance. The cylindrical shoulders, the silver forearms, the silver visor. Power Core Combiner's Huffer also has dark blue painted on his torso. Unfortunately, that dark blue doesn't show up well in my photography. It almost looks black here. While not a big toy by any stretch of the imagination, this is probably the biggest official Huffer that we're going to have until the Deluxe Kingdom version comes out. He's quite grim and gritty next to the bright colors of Timeline's Huffer. He shows off his tires with confidence, unlike the Combiner Wars version who's trying his best to hide them. Next to Beast Hunter's Huffer, you can see how solid and no-nonsense he is. The Beast Hunter's one is hollowish and kibbly and trying way too hard to look tough. Power Core Combiner Huffer doesn't have to try, he is tough. Just compare the look of those forearms, that says it all. He's just built to a completely different standard. Here he is next to his Minicon partner, Caliber. He turns into a little blue and silver guy with a large gun attached to one arm. I guess he's a target master because he can turn into a gun. And like pretty much every target master, it's pretty lame. Shockingly, Huffer doesn't have any 5mm ports. His hand holes are a little bit smaller. Instead, the back of his right arm pegs into the Minicon. Caliber's leg joints were too loose to hold this position. He's only able to do so through the magic of Poster Putty. He also has another mode as a Power Master partner. Or is that a Breast Master? I don't know what it is. What would you call it? He's sticking onto a flip out peg in Huffer's chest. Caliburst can be positioned in a bunch of ways, but this is how it looks in the official instructions. The fictional gimmick gives the main bot a power boost. The sad reality is that the legs don't peg in and can fall down if the joints are too loose. So at best, it makes Huffer look pregnant. At worst, it looks like he has a small blue child strapped to his chest against his will. Kids, they grow up so fast. 
Moving on. The chest peg folds in, head rotates, the shoulder joints are super tight, and you can get a good range of movement despite the kibble getting in the way of a full 360. Forearms can rotate on a tight ball joint, and a hinge above the elbow allows for a full deep bend. He can do the splits and move his legs straight forward and straight back. He has a thigh swivel and a 90 degree knee bend. I've noticed that sometimes he has trouble balancing on his feet, even in a vanilla pose. Huffer also has a combiner form or a prime mode. Fold down his regular head, hinge and peg the arms, hinge out the large head from the truck hood, lift out the shoulder pegs, adjust the legs, and fold down the knee pegs. And there he is, fully transformed. I don't have any combiner limbs, so I guess that's it. What? I got nothing. I'm collecting huffers, not limb bots. What am I supposed to do? Well, that's not helpful. Ouch, that's kind of hurtful. I don't think they're expensive, but that's not the point. Maybe if people donate to my coffee fund, I can do stuff like that more often. Regardless, it would take weeks for them to arrive, and I'm in the middle of the review right now. Any other ideas? Besides that. Or that. Okay, that's a good idea. What should I make the limbs out of? That's cool, but I don't have a 3D printer. Not a bad idea. Polymer clay would be ideal for that, but I don't have enough to make it work right now. While I do have a lot of them, I don't think they would work like that. What are you guys getting at? Well, I do have a lot of cardboard kicking around. It could work. Give me a moment. Two hours later. And we're back. Huffer is back with custom cardboard limbs. Thanks folks, I knew we could figure it out together. Let's compare my hobo budget solution to how he might look with proper limbs. The limbs of power core combiners were considered drones and didn't have robot modes of their own. Only the main torso bots had that. Sometimes four drones were sold together and other times they sold them as a complete set with a torso bot. Now let's take a look at that combiner mode head. It has some great light piped eyes, but its most notable feature is that it bears more than a passing resemblance to Menasaur's head. And we all know that Menasaur was a Decepticon combiner whose body was made from a transport truck. If this guy was made in dark colors, I think we could easily see him as an updated Menasaur. And they did paint him in dark colors, twice, as Crankcase and as Assault Master. I'm just surprised that they didn't paint this Huffer red and give him an Optimus Prime head. Seems like an obvious move to me. It's what they did the Motormaster in Combiner Wars. Speaking of which, here he is next to CW Motormaster and a deluxe sized limb bot from that line. You can see just how tiny the power core combiners really were. Here he is next to the largest and the smallest huffers that I own. The big guy is a third party toy called Reckless Combat and he's put out by Final Victory. The power core combiners were a weird phase of Transformers. Not really part of the movie and not part of the Generations line. I don't know how successful it was, but at least it turned Huffer from a weak, whiny wimp into a macho machine man. That, and I finally got to review a combiner. Sort of. I only wished I could have turned his cardboard limbs into a functional trailer, because that's what Huffer deserves. A trailer to call his own. A trailer that could transform into cool combiner arms and legs. Can you guys think of any combiners that do that? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Like my vids? Buy me a coffee. It's easy. Visit coffee.com slash cardboardbots.